Hello and welcome to Sounding Board, a community access television program of Seroptimus International in Novato. My name is Madeline Peters and I'm the moderator of today's show. And my guest here is Eleni Katsaros and I'll provide a little bit of background on Eleni in a moment. But the topic for today is uh, looking at STEM, science, technology, engineering and mathematics and shifting our thinking to more towards STEAM science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. But before we get into our topic, a little bit about Seroptimus. Seroptimus is a global organization, and its mission is improving the lives of women and girls through programs leading to social and economic empowerment. So Eleni, thank you for being here. I realize wrestling you away from your day job is challenging. Um, you are an art teacher at uh, one of our high schools, at San Marino mm -hmm. High School, and you have a passion for art, mm -hmm. and your own history sort of leads into that. And I also want to congratulate you on being the recipient of your master's degree Thank only you. two short weeks ago, and I'll say Eleni was one of my students in my closing year at Dominican, and I'm very happy to have you here on the program and to celebrate all of your successes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for having me. All right. So why don't I just kind of turn this over to you. You can provide a little bit of background on yourself and then talk about your project and working with students and just sort of the importance of art and needing to make sure that the arts are preserved within our educational system and within our culture. Great. Well, um, I'll never forget the first day of class when you were like, what do you want your thesis to be on? And while I hadn't quite thought about it, a passion of mine has always been why the arts are important in everyone's everyday life. Um, why thinking creatively, the creative thinking process, uh, being presented with a problem, finding a solution to the problem, and then reflecting on that problem is very much how art is tackled, especially in my classroom. Um, one of the big subjects that is being uh, pushed in education today is science, technology, engineering, and math. It's this concept of STEM. And I feel strongly that it's missing this huge concept of creative thinking, which is integrating the arts, even just the foundations, um, principles of design, um, elements of art, just, just having that slight foundation for these kids to not only think of their outcomes, but what their outcomes will look like, um, how people will perceive these inventions, these great ideas that they're gonna have. It's not just a matter of them working well, it's about making them marketable and making people want them and be desirable as well. So there's a lot of concepts that go into why we would want the arts included. Well, I remember when you first started talking about this and you, were, you had established a relationship with another teacher who was doing uh, a project, it ha I think it had to do with... Uh, Rube Goldberg. Oh, right, yes. right. Uh, but then I thought what was so creative, and actually I think we have, we're have we going to be able to show it as part of this program is, and if you could talk about it a little bit, the video that you created. I guess it's on YouTube as well. Yes, <laughs> yes, most of my videos, well, they were on YouTube, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> so we have an awesome teacher, Nick Williams. He recently won this huge award. Um, he's our, one of our main STEM teachers, and his freshmen do a Rube Goldberg project. And Why don't you just kind of explain that briefly? Yes. So um, Rube Goldberg was an, a, a cartoon artist. Um, his family actually wasn't okay with him being an artist, and he oh, went sure. into plumbing for a while <laughs> and left and became a cartoon artist for a newspaper. And his cartoons were about these um, crazy machines that did mundane tasks. So uh, he would make a machine to lift a napkin and wipe your face, or. <laughs> A machine that would like bug a bird to wake you up as an alarm clock. Like they're just these silly concepts, and these students make them, and they they engineer the entire thing. Um, math is involved, science is involved, engineering is involved. Um, the main elements of STEM. And um, the only thing that was missing was art. So um, these kids, we, we you know, um, Mr. Williams and I collaborated, and he would tell me how these kids would throw, slap paint on at the end of these projects, and sometimes you would actually That lose. was the design. Yes, <laughs> yes, that was the, uh, as far as the art concept went. And they would lose, um, 
you would lose the visual of the functionality sometimes because it was this afterthought and it almost ruined these, these projects. So instead, we decided to integrate uh, the principles of design prior and then have the students create a theme for their Rube Goldberg project so that not only were they thinking about what they wanted the outcome to look like, they had something to tie it all together. So we had kids do like a candy theme or a cooking theme, or we had a group of kids do a medieval theme. Um, that one was really cool. Um, but yeah, so they worked with these themes and um, to get them to think of this, I came up with this video. It's very short, it's very cheesy. I made it at home. But the concept is what if everyone loves their cell phones? We can't live without them. That's right. Kids are glued to them. But what if your cell phone had all these functionalities, all these apps, but everything was, that you know and love, right? Your, your mini computer that yes, you carry in around. In your hands was actually the size, look, and weight of a brick. <laughs> so. The video um, is there. You hear a phone ringing, and it's you know you're in bed, and you're like, go to answer the phone, and bam, it's a brick, and you're like, ow. <laughs> and then um, people love to jog with their phones. They carry your music and everything now. So usually you just put into this little thing. Well, if you had a brick, you'd have to strap it on with a bunch of rope. And you know when you go to leave the house, you throw your phone in your back pocket. Well, you can't do that with a brick. So it's like me struggling to. And Stuff this yeah. phone up, and I threw my hands up in frustration, and um, you know it ends the video, and it, these kids are like, uh, and I'm like, well, don't you get it? I was like, what if this thing that you love, what if Apple made you a brick, but has all these apps and everything you love? What would you do? Yeah. So let's we're gonna break here because we're gonna show that <laughs> video. Thanks oh, for man. rescuing that. You're so welcome. we'll take a break here. Now people have seen your very creative video. So did your students get it? They got it. They got it. In fact, they, they chuckled a little bit. Um, but I think that just makes it more interesting for them to see their teacher goofing off. But it made a point. It definitely made the point. Mm -hmm. So, And that must have been something, because you're, you're talking about like a whole history of the teacher working with these students. And again, the students didn't really integrate principles of art into their project at all. As you, you know, you alluded to it as like just kind of slapping on some color mm -hmm. at the last minute. So then, okay, what happened next? So that was, I would say, so I get went every day. I dedicated my prep period to going and observing this class. And there were moments where I'd be like, oh, you guys, like, you know, you're forgetting to add this in. And they're like, we really have to focus on the engineering part of this right now. And I, you know, I kind of laid off. Um, but in the end, the final products were amazing. And I think the best compliment I could have gotten was um, we had, they do this whole show, this whole production, and um, judges come repeatedly year after year. So we have a lot of similar judges who come to, vis to see and who, these and things. who are these judges? Um, local contractors, local engineers. I think Mr. Williams' dad comes. Um, just anybody local that is willing to judge these things, really. And they ask questions, scientific questions, engineering questions. Uh, but one of the comments that was said was, I realized, or I noticed this year, how the products were much more cohesive and how they became, they had more purpose because of these 
themes that were added to them and how students took more time to pay attention to the details so that they were more appealing to the observers. Um, and just basically everything that we were going for was in the comments from the judges. But if the students had not had that little sort of prompting to look at principles of design and appeal, perhaps that thinking wouldn't have occurred. It would have been projects similar to the ones that were I don't believe they would have. Past. I don't believe, I don't believe that, that very, I mean, I took a day. It was one period to teach them this. I don't think that they would have thought of that small little concept that made such a difference to the audience. So I, I found it to be successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's amazing. And you had your view, obviously the teacher that you were working with, but also the view of the judges mm -hmm. to make a comment like that. Yeah. Okay, so now you know, and obviously the classroom teachers know, and these judges know, uh, but your struggle to kind of hold the arts as a place of importance still goes on. Yes. So how do you, how do you deal with this? I think the... I'm a second year teacher, um, which in itself presents problems of me consistently growing and, and finding my way in my community. Um, I would say making myself available, like that video was on YouTube, um, so that other teachers who do similar projects, I've shot them emails saying, use this, use this in your class pre any type of building or engineering project, um, just so they have that foundational knowledge of what they're getting into, ideas, rhythm, pattern, what they could use to make their projects more cohesive. Moving forward, I think building our, building our arts program and collaborating more within the STEM, within the math, within just within the community in general, because arts, within STEM is great, but arts within, poet, we work with poetry in our class. We do visual poetry where we put art to uh, poems. We work with math when we do, um, pers uh, what's the word? Perspective and floor plans. Um, I think the more we integrate in, the stronger presence it has in our school community, the closer we can get to really integrating it more fully uh, throughout the curriculums. Okay, but it's an uphill battle because usually people are, you know, people such as yourself are fighting for place in the curriculum. Mm -hmm. you know, like that's the first thing to go is uh, the arts just disappear. So yeah, it's and a, it's a it's a good thing you're entering the career of uh, education now because <laughs> hopefully your energy and your message will find a permanent home. I hope so. I think everyone hears art and thinks, oh, the easy class, oh, finger painting or clay arts and crafts, whatever. And well, yeah, that's that's technically the basis um, in terms of we do creative things. The creative process can be applied to absolutely everything moving forward, whether you go to college, whether you don't go to college. Um, I bought a house four years ago and, and my garbage disposal broke and the process was, you know, I have a problem. What is my solution? And I took it apart and I took it out and by taking it apart I knew how to put it back in and it's just this matter of thinking and, and reflecting and processing things and it, it's not, the art's wonderful, yes, but it's it's the way that you think about it that can be applied to everything. So there, you, what you're doing is part of a whole movement because as you said, everything is STEM, 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 STEM. But I remember when you first, uh, you and I first discussed this topic, you talked about STEM to STEAM, and it was the first time I'd ever heard, heard of that. And then following your educating me, <laughs> then it's like I'm looking at the library, STEM to STEAM, I'm looking at our, our local public library, I'm looking at articles, I went online to, to check some of the resources. Oh my goodness, there's websites all over the place. So there's a big calling mm -hmm. um, beyond you, beyond our community, to really looking at incorporating arts in uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and across the board, as you said, in, mm -hmm. in, in the arts and poetry, again, to have that visual perspective. Mm -hmm. So can you speak a little bit to that, that whole the steam? movement? Yeah. Yes. Um, well, my, my favorite example is Leonardo da Vinci. I used him right in the beginning of my thesis. He was originally a scientist. Um, he he studied um, the human form, and because of his study with anatomy, he was able to draw it 
and create the beautiful art that he did. And I think that he creates this wonderful circle, um, whereas STEM creates a part of it and then art fulfills that circle. And it's really understanding how they all intertwine. It, it's been scientifically proven that students who create a section of creativity, who can make a connection between creativity and these more straight-lined um, academics, they, they create this stronger link. They learn things better. They're able to retain information um, more efficiently. It's, it, it really is a full connection. And missing that link means that they're not getting the full benefits of these programs. Mm -hmm. And slowly, 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 more and more schools are bringing this in, um, bringing this element of art in and integrating it as a small piece to all of their academics, um, not just the STEM, but they're, they're full STEAM schools and they're, they're really productive and really showing positive outcomes. Well, I'm really glad that you're here to articulate that as one of our programs too, because it's important for us to showcase things that are important, that really are going to help advance students further mm -hmm. and help integrate information so that it can be retained. You talked about visualization. And I know in my work, in previous one of my careers in working with students with learning disabilities, we kept on trying to come up with ways to create visuals for students to understand material because text-based learning was didn't work. Mm -mm. So you know, I mean, my my work was not artistic in the same sense that your your work is, but we had to pay attention to visualization because we needed to tap into a different part of the brain to help children who were struggling learn how to understand and master whatever their content was. So mm -hmm. I really applaud you for your efforts. Thank you. So now, one of the other things that I absolutely love about your work, and I think this is the second year I found, uh, followed you on this, is your work in street art. Yes. And so can you, And I, that's all I want to say, this is your story. <laughs> so I want you to kind of talk about this and then we have, uh, samples of your student work, which really touched me deeply when I saw them. They're amazing. Um, I was inspired to do street art by my master teacher at Sonoma, Ms. Hire. Her children do replicas of famous artworks, and it's this whole day that the kids put together, and they go outside and do it in chalk, and they do a beautiful job. And I thought, well, we do all this work. Why? build something that we've already seen and not create a message that speaks out to our community. It's going to be on the sidewalk. It's going to be seen by all our students. So we decided to focus on social inequities the first year. And we um, did a whole class, weeks, we did weeks where we watched videos on bullying and racism and body shaming and anything, anything the kids were interested in. They pretty much run this whole, the direction of how this project goes. And so this is the one group they don't get to, one unit they don't get to choose their groups. I group them based on, they choose their top three interests and then I try and do my best to get them in groups with their first choice. And they work together and create these images that speak out and some of them are deep. Some of them um, address suicide. Some of them address depression. Some of them are very straightforward putting a, a band-aid over bullying. Um, but we talk about mental disabilities, physical disabilities, anything and everything under the sun that they feel is important or pertains to them right now in their lives, which is also what I think makes it so important because it's what they see in their community, it's what they see amongst their peers, and I just guide them through this. I tell them, I mean, the art, the art comes in, we research online, street art, uh, graffiti, we, I teach them how to scale their drawings, each student has a specific job, some of them are artists, some of them um, just do the mathematics in terms of where the space is going to go they all have a piece in this and I think they amaze themselves because they're vibrant, they have so much color, parents come around and see them on open house night and they're just, I, I've been blown away both years, both years. They come up 
with just amazing work. And it's this large scale thing that they didn't even know that they could do. And it's, it's Well, great. I think one of the things, especially when you talk about the topics the students touch, this is the venue for them to really share publicly what issues they're dealing or they're mm -hmm. grappling with. It's, yeah. And it's a way to do this through their collaboration, through their artwork as a visual representation. I wonder how many opportunities students have to really be that open and reflective and expressive mm -hmm. to really, you know, let the adult public know what the key issues, the important issues that they are grappling with. Some of the topics, you know, some of the visuals, and we'll see. You have what, what about eighty visuals? That yeah, you have eighty. Yeah, and we'll try to incorporate as many of them as we can in this program. But really powerful messages, and that was. To me, when I saw those visuals, it was these students speaking openly and honestly through art. Yeah, they created it all on their own. They, I, I, I give them a very large depth of freedom on this because I want them to have a voice in this. It also brings up the subject of how can we create art that's beautiful, that gives a message, but that is still safe art for those that this may affect and who, um, how can we make it so that people see this and they they understand, like how does your audience understand your message? There's so many aspects to this that makes it really interesting and, and powerful for those kids. It gives them a voice. It's not them just doing, oh, great painting. Oh, I'm really proud of my painting. It's, no, you have a full audience here and you're speaking to that audience. and. What is the message that you want them to, to get from it? So mm -hmm. it's, it's a really cool project. Oh, yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> well, at least I'm glad that we are at least able to uh, showcase some of the work that you've done so bravely and so with a lot, of, a lot of effort on your part. I mean, just in terms of the prep, I've watched you go through this yes. process now <laughs> several years. It is not a project that you think about and implement in 15 minutes. This takes no. a, a lot of time. <laughs> Uh, we're going to be showing uh, students art, uh, but I also want to give you a chance to reflect on all of the work that you're doing now. Just you've talked about STEM to STEAM, you've talked about the street art, and your role as an art teacher, as an artist yourself, and as an art teacher. Um, what are the things that are important for you yourself as you think back on not only what you've done for your students, but what this means to you? I think. I was in a position, so I, I was not, I didn't go to college and become a teacher. I went to college and became an interior designer and it took me a while to even figure that out. So I understand what kids are going through when they leave high school where it's all been planned out for them and now they're like, okay, well now what? Mm -hmm. You know, I go to college or maybe I don't go to college. What are my next steps? Um, I first of all never thought I was gonna go to college, so going to college was my first big step. And then finding something that I was passionate about back then, yeah, I loved doing interior design. If I was gonna go to school again, I'd, I'd probably stick with it. Um, but then you hit the real world, and the real world has bills, and it has um, <laughs> different relationships and jobs, and things change, and I actually switched from interior design to IT hardware and software sales because my goals were all financially driven and I wanted to make money and be independent and as I was in sales and trying to reach these financial goals somebody asked me I think it was my CEO what what is your why why do you want to make all this money like what gives you purpose in life and my why totally went the opposite direction of these financial goals. I mean, yeah, the basics, I wanted to own a home and a car and I want to take care of my mom one day. And But then it's like I wanted to go back to Greece every summer, not for vacation, but that's where my family's from, that's my culture. It's an important part of me. I wanted to coach softball. I wanted to raise a family and have all this time where you can't quite do that in the corporate world. So as I kept striving to reach these goals, I was actually pulling myself away from this financially driven path and pulled more towards a path of, of happiness. And, and now where I'm at, I don't go to work every day. And that's why I love what I do. I wake up every day, I have 160 something students that range from 
thank you, Miss Katz, for a wonderful day, to screw you, I don't want to talk to you today. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Um, and But I would say that there is not one student that I have a poor relationship with or a poor rapport with because I feel like my life's path has put me has given me the experience to really make some type of impact with these students. And I will probably continue to do this until I feel that maybe that's not the case anymore. But for right now, this is what I do is because I really honestly feel that me as an art teacher specifically gives me the freedom to really help these kids maybe find something that they can be interested in. And whether it be a project itself, maybe, you know, not every kid likes every unit that we do, but the boys especially love the recycled design where they get to build things. Or um, maybe some kid might find out, we had a, a special ed kid find out he's a great watercolor painter. <laughs> Who would have known? And, they, you know, they just, they find these things and they'll, we did a career in the arts day this year where people met welders and music technicians and all these things and they're like, wow, we can do this? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, it's all out of the box thinking. That's all it is and it's, it's what we do in the classroom. I give it to you at a small scale and then you go out into the real world and get to do it at a, at a larger scale. And it's, it's just fantastic. Every year is different. Every class, I teach the same five classes every day, but every class has a different personality. Um, it's, I just, I love what I do. And well, I, that's very apparent. <laughs> that is very apparent. Well, I, uh, I know that we're going to continue showing pictures of your students' art, uh, but I really want to take the time to thank you right now. Um, thank you on many levels for agreeing to uh, to a segment of time where you'd come and have a conversation with me on camera and showcase your students work and your passion and your philosophical uh, orientation toward b making sure the arts have a strong place within our curriculum and uh, thank you for sharing so passionately about your love of teaching and your commitment to helping students find the why mm -hmm. in their lives as you found in yours so thank you Eleni for thank being you. here Thanks for having me. So thank you very much to uh, Seroptimus International of Novato and to Novato Community Television for making this all possible. Today's program's been on looking at the arts, the whole concept, examining the concept of going from STEM to STEAM. And our guest today is Eleni Katsaros, a teacher here at one of the high schools in Novato. My name is Madeline Peters. Thank you for your attention.